It's the week of January 4th, and this is COVID Conversations, where we discuss the latest COVID-19 news with the experts. A new COVID-19 variant first discovered in the UK late in 2020 has made its way to several states in the US. Is it more deadly than the original strain of COVID-19? Is it more contagious? Daniel McQuillan is a physician in the Division of Infectious Diseases at Leahy Hospital and Medical Center and president-elect of the Infectious Diseases Society of America. Today's question is, what do we know about the newest strain of COVID-19? Dr. McQuillan, welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Um, we know a few things about it. Um, there's actually two variant strains, perhaps three, that we know about. Um, it's very common for viruses that infect a large number of people to have some mutations, which are changes in their genetic makeup. Viruses and bacteria as well, when they mutate, the virus will either become more or less fit. And what that means is more fit is a virus that can survive in adverse circumstances better and less fit, they won't. Um, in terms of the mutations for the coronavirus, uh, both the one in England and uh, the UK and also the one in Africa have mutations in what's called the spike protein. That's the major protein that the virus uses to attach to human cells and establish infection. And um, there's a lot of different outcomes that could happen. Uh, it might make it more able for the virus to spread in people. And that actually seems to be the case, at least for the one in uh, the UK. Um, it's, it's basically uh, what they've seen epidemiologically is a change in the number of people that get infected as secondary cases from someone who has it. So mm -hmm. for instance, if you're gonna, if you have disease here, in the US and we expect you to expose five to 10 secondary cases, there may be a higher number than that. And it seems to be holding up that that's the case. The mutations might make it easier for the virus to evade either vaccination or natural immunity. But again, those, the vaccines at least, the, the two messenger RNA vaccines have multiple targets on the spike protein. So it's less likely that that's gonna be the case. So, so should people be alarmed that there is, a, I mean, it sounds like it's a common thing that happens with any virus. So should, should there be alarm or should we really just make sure that we're pursuing the same safety measures that we've been, that we've been you know, doing so far? So it's kind of an either or question to which the answer is yes. <laughs> so um, yes, we should be alarmed because what we're seeing in the UK is that the, the increased spread is a real thing. Um, the problem is it's really hard to tell at this point whether that's because the virus is more contagious or because as is happening in the US, people are sick and tired of isolating and getting what's called pandemic fatigue. And so at the same time that you're getting a more contagious virus, people aren't being as careful. And, and so the other part of that answer is the, the, the measures that we've used thus far that have been very effective, such as um, distancing, wearing masks when near someone else, trying to stay away from crowded in, uh, inside places, washing your hands uh, frequently when you're changing masks and that sort of thing, those are all still effective. It doesn't really matter what the mutation on the virus is. But what this means is that we really need to, in addition to trying to vaccinate as many people as possible, we need to give the vaccine time to work by continuing those measures. Um, and, you know, they're really simple um, and, and they work incredibly well if everyone does them. That's the problem. And it really takes a lot of attention to detail at a time where it's really hard to do it because humans don't like being sitting on Zoom by themselves talking to people. <laughs> I agree. I think we're all a little fatigued, but I think if we all work together, we'd be able to get out of it faster. Yeah. You say that, you know, there's, there isn't any uh, evidence so far that it might be more deadly, but when you say if maybe a, a person who has it exposes five to 10 people, this new variant, you could expose 15, 20, those people potentially may have an adverse reaction to the virus which could be deadly for them. So that's also something we really have to be mindful of, yes? That's an absolutely correct point. And um, 
by saying it's not more deadly, uh, it doesn't mean it's any different than what we have now. And right. the majority of people don't get severe illness and end up in the hospital and or die. Um, but a significant number of them do. And if you increase the number of cases, that number is going to go up proportionally as well. And you're absolutely correct. And that's that's why the uh, the the physical distancing and mitigation measures that we're using and advising are, are crucial, particularly at this point. That's great. Thank you so much. So I think the key takeaways are we really have to watch how this vaccine works on those who have, have received it so far. Everyone needs to maintain the safety precautions that they've been doing uh, as of yet. And, and hopefully we can really you know uh, bring this down. Yes, I, and I, I totally agree. Um, one of the important things that's being done in the US is that the Centers for Disease Control is increasing surveillance, um, both nationally, internationally, and locally by actually doing more sequencing of virus, viruses in the US than before. And it'll help us get a better idea of, of what the prevalence of this strain is and, and what impact it's having. We just have to keep Keep our eyes peeled to the TV and, and on the radio and, and, and stay tuned. <laughs> Definitely. Well, Dr. McQuillan, it was a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for joining me. This is COVID Conversations, where we discuss the latest COVID-19 news with the experts. Thank you so much. Thank you.